If you are in the market for choosing a subwoofer for your custom car audio system, you may have noticed that some models are dual voice coil, whereas others are single voice coil. Is one better than the other? And what other common voice coil misconceptions do we need to avoid? Hey everybody, I'm Mark. Welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the channel where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. Let's get into it. Before we can determine whether a dual or single voice coil is the right choice for you, we need to have an understanding of the basics. First off, what is the voice coil? The voice coil is inside the subwoofer and it's essentially a wire that is wrapped around a cylinder, which is called the former. When electricity flows through that wire and that wire is inside of this magnetic field of the magnet of the subwoofer or speaker, it's going to convert that electrical energy to physical movement of the speaker or subwoofer cone. Knowing this, it's very easy to understand the difference between a single and dual voice coil subwoofer. On a single voice coil subwoofer, there is only one wire that is wrapped around the former. And since there's only one wire, there's going to be two ends. One end will be positive and the other end will be the negative terminal connection on your subwoofer. On a dual voice coil subwoofer, we simply add a second wire. So now we have two positive connections, two negative connections for those two total wires. This is why the easy way to tell whether or not you have a dual or single voice coil subwoofer is just to count the terminals. Since we have two terminals, on this particular subwoofer here, this is a single voice coil sub. And since we have four terminals on this subwoofer that we can connect wires to, this is a dual voice coil subwoofer. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of each coil type? We're gonna get into that in just a second, but really quick, a shout out to our show sponsor for this episode, New Concepts with their Karma SS speaker cable. If you guys have watched my builds before here on the channel, you know that this is typically my go-to speaker wire. Not only is this wire available in the typical 16, 14, and 12 gauge, but it's also available as 10 gauge and this absolutely monstrous eight gauge speaker wire. This of course is perfect for those super high power subwoofer applications. The Karma speaker cable is very flexible even on this large stuff. On the smaller stuff, it's extremely flexible. You're gonna have no issues running this throughout a build. And this is also OFC wire oxygen free copper. If you guys wanna learn more, check out the links down in the video description. So back to our advantages and disadvantages of these different voice coil designs. One might wonder why bother with having this extra complexity of a dual voice coil system? Well, the main benefit of our dual voice coil subwoofer is it allows us much more wiring flexibility. Generally speaking, the lower the impedance that we wire our amplifier to, the more output that we're going to get out of it. If you've ever looked at the power ratings of an amplifier, this is clear. Now with the dual voice coil subwoofer, we have different options for how we could wire this in order to meet our goals. First off, we could do what is called series wiring. In that case, we're going to connect our positive to our positive of the amplifier, our negative to the negative of the amplifier, and then we need to connect the voice coils together with a jumper that goes from positive to negative. By doing that with this dual four ohm voice coil subwoofer, we add the ohm load of the two voice coils together. So since this is dual four, it's gonna be four plus four equals eight, we would turn this into an eight ohm total load that the amplifier would see. Well, hold on now, eight ohms seems kind of high. Why would we ever want to do that? Well, what if we're running four of these subwoofers? If we were to run four of these subwoofers all paralleled together, so it was a parallel between the subwoofer and then a series connection on each subwoofer, we would present a final ohm load of two ohms to the amp. Breaking down the math for that really quick, when you're doing a parallel connection, you're going to do one over the number. So in this case, we do one over eight plus one over eight plus one over eight plus one over eight, and that is going to give us one over two, and then we take the inverse of that, which just means we put the two on top, the one on the bottom, and now we have two ohms. Now, what if we're running this subwoofer just by itself? Now what we could do is what's called a parallel connection. Again, we're gonna connect the positive to the positive terminal on our amplifier, the negative to the negative terminal, and we have to connect both voice coils. So we're now going to connect positive to positive and negative to negative. And if we run through the math for this, we're going to do one over four plus one over four equals one over two, 
And now we have a two ohm load just with this one single subwoofer. So now because this subwoofer becomes a two ohm load, what if we had two subwoofers? We could wire those in parallel to make a one ohm load if our amplifier is stable down to one ohm. The point here is that the benefit of having the dual voice coils is that added wiring flexibility, especially as we add additional subs. With that all said, as long as you are properly planning out how you intend to wire your subwoofers and what final ohm load you're hoping to achieve at your amplifier, there's really no disadvantage to going with a single voice coil sub. That's because almost every single voice coil subwoofer that is out there is usually offered in two different versions. And the most common loads you're going to see is either a single two ohm voice coil or a single four ohm voice coil. So just breaking down a quick example, let's say that I know I only want to install one subwoofer and I want to use the two ohm load value of my amplifier it's stable down to two ohms, I'm just going to get the single two ohm voice coil. Now, if I know from the start that I'm planning on getting a pair of subwoofers and I wanna have a two ohm load, in that case, I would wanna get two single four ohm voice coil subwoofers. That's because I could wire those two four ohm voice coils in parallel, which means I would have one over four plus one over four, that equals one over two, we take the inverse, that's going to give us a two ohm load at our amp. So depending how you look at it, you might actually consider a single voice coil subwoofer to be more advantageous as it greatly simplifies the wiring. We only have to make one connection of wires to the terminals here. We don't have to worry about jumpering these to another set. Generally speaking, the other big advantage of a single voice coil subwoofer is they are more inexpensive to manufacture. But with that said, it's hard to really see how these savings are passed to the consumer because there's not really any subwoofers out there on the market that are sold as both a dual voice coil or a single voice coil model. Now let's talk about some of the mistakes and misconceptions of voice coils for subwoofers. And mainly we're gonna be talking about the dual voice coil subwoofer here just because it's a little bit more complex. The first mistake you want to avoid is you should never power the two different connections on the voice coil with a stereo signal. In a stereo signal, the left signal is going to be different from the right signal. So it would be a mistake to take a two channel amplifier and connect the right signal to one voice coil and the left signal signal to the other voice coil. That's because as the signal is different from left to right, you're going to have phase relationship issues between the two different voice coil connections, which is going to cause problems. What you want is to have a mono signal. That way you have the exact same signal sent to both voice coils. And that's why if you are using a two channel amplifier, you wanna make sure that you can bridge it to a summed mono channel, which is pretty common out there for almost all amplifiers on the market nowadays. Another very common misconception about dual voice voice coil subwoofers is that you can get by with only connecting to one of the voice coils. Now, technically the subwoofer will still work. And I put work in quotes because you're going to have a three dB reduction in efficiency and you are going to have massively largely changed TS parameters for the way that the subwoofer is gonna perform. In short, it's not a good idea. Do not do it. It's not going to perform well at all. You wanna connect both voice coils and properly design your system. Another common misconception is that a dual voice coil subwoofer is better than a single voice coil subwoofer because it can handle more power, but that is not the case. As an example, let's say that our dual voice coil subwoofer is a dual two ohm voice coil subwoofer. Let's say that we want to wire it in series. So we have two plus two, that's four ohms of resistance. And let's say we have amplifier one that will produce 500 watts RMS at four ohms. Now let's say there's another amplifier, amplifier two. It also makes 500 watts RMS, but this time it does it at one ohm. So let's say we take the subwoofer and now we're wiring it in parallel, so we have one over two plus one over two, that equals one over one. We're gonna flip it, it's still one over one, which is one ohm. If we wire that same exact subwoofer to one ohm on that second amplifier that's also producing 500 watts, there's going to be no subwoofer performance benefit between those two different scenarios. We're gonna get the same level of power going through our subwoofer and creating the same levels of output. So in summary, is there a performance benefit to having a dual voice coil subwoofer? Not really. Although there is, of course, the benefit, like we talked about, of wiring flexibility. I wanna hear from you guys, though, the community. If you already have a subwoofer system, are you running dual or single voice coil subwoofers? And for those of you that might be new here and picking out your system, what voice coil design do you think that you are going to go with? 
Now, if you'd like to learn more advanced topics on car audio electrical, definitely check out this playlist here on screen. Don't forget next time you need car audio speaker wiring for your build to check out our sponsor, New Concepts, at the link down in the video description. And a big thanks to them along with Jerry, the rest of the Patreon membership team, and of course to you for tuning in and watching.